Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. Happy Sunday. Thank you for spending the second week in Advent, which we will we'll be discussing this morning with us here at Unity Way Church. Unity Way Church is a metaphysical church, which means that we study really the context of wisdom, not only uh, of the scriptures, but any holy scriptures or where truth can be gleaned. We're searching for the one presence and the one power in all that we do. We use a metaphysical lens, which means, again, we go back to the context and also the etymology of how words have come to us through the centuries. And then ultimately, how we can use the truth that we're studying to transform our own individual lives. So I invite you this morning to have an expansive mind, be open and receptive to really some ideas and thoughts that you can see them maybe in a new and different way. Our opening affirmation is from Wings of Prayer, and it is from Daily Word, December the 26th, 1930. I recognize the path that Spirit points out, and I take it. This morning, I invite you to take a deep cleansing breath in. Hold it for a count, and then release it. Again, I invite you to take in a deep cleansing breath and realize that the power of Spirit is within you that we are led day by day exactly what we need to be doing. There's no mystery really with that when we're connected in total alignment with the one presence and the one power. So again, I just invite you to breathe in that truth. And as you hold that truth, as good unity students, we affirm one presence, one power, one life, one substance, one divine idea that we truly are absolutely divine. And if you believe that high truth calling with me, I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Before we go into our daily word, I want to share with you uh, the idea we're in the second week of Lent, and this is the week of peace. And these are ideas that we'll be focusing on during the lessons as we go to the Christmas story and how we can lens these Advent divine ideas to really awaken within us and bring out a higher and new understanding of how to show up again in the life that we are living right here and right now. I like to say some of the practices associated with Advent. You can have an Advent calendar. You can light a wreath with candles. There's Advent devotions. You can also do Kris Kringles, many things. Decorations represent that Advent, that the coming of the awakening of the birth of the Christ back in back in the old Bible story, which we will be studying. But I have an affirmation I'd like to share with you. And as we remember the very first week of Advent, the first candle was for hope and faith. And now this is the second week, and this is for peace. And the affirmation, if you join with me, please, is I am Christ peace now. Again, let's just say that again slowly. I am Christ peace now. Peace is who we are. Peace is who we've always been. May this be the Sunday service that helps us awaken to that understanding so we can live it, we can be it, and we can breathe it into every activity that we do. And again, we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now here is Mickey with our daily word. Good morning. The word for today is peace. And the affirmation is, I choose peace. As I continue on the Advent journey, my thoughts turn to peace. I remember what gives me peace. The beauty of a sunset, a comforting hug, a heartfelt prayer. In those moments, peace encompasses all of my thoughts and feelings, transforming any worries or troubles. I wish to carry that feeling with me always. I realize I do not have to wait for specific experiences to feel peaceful. I have the power to claim peace at all times and in all situations. I affirm that divine peace is greater than any worldly condition. I remain centered and calm and don't let minor irritations knock me off center or linger in my awareness. God's peace and my peace 
forever. And from the Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And again, the affirmation is, I choose peace. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. I choose peace. We choose peace when we remember who we are, especially as the divine image and likeness of God or spirit, Elohim, Jehovah, El Shaddai, Elohim, Yahweh. All those ancient uh, Jewish words, Hebrew words actually mean again, male, female, but they are the image from which we are created. So as we fall back onto that understanding, let us know that we have an understanding of spirit that is based in peace. We don't have to go someplace. We don't have to hide in a cave. We don't have to go under the ocean. We don't have to go into outer space. We don't have to go to Mars. We could if we want to, but the presence of peace is wherever we are. And we just know that to be so. I would like to sync up with Sound Unity right now. So I invite you just to become still where you are. Since 1890, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore have held this divine idea, the Society of Silent Help, later changed to Silent Unity, the name. And they had the idea that 24-7, 24-7, someone would be sitting in a chapel or a room in a chair in front of the prayer claims that they have received, affirming answered prayer. So right now, back at Unity Village in the Sound Unity Chapel, there is a person sitting in that chair in that chapel, sitting in front of those prayer claims. So we bless those prayer claims. We bless the soul that's sitting in that chair. And again, by the power of truth, we bring that energy, that energy, that healing, illuminating energy, and we bring it forth to this sanctuary where I am right here, and I send it forth wherever you may be listening or watching this YouTube video. May you know that this energy is peace. It's a peace that passes all understanding. It knows no opposite. And that's truly what we teach at Unity Way Church. And if you believe in that high understanding, I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Before we get into my talk, which I have a really doozy for you, I have a really doozy of a comic. And you can see the cartoon or the, the, the caption of the comic is ABC News. Mother and baby doing well, are doing well. And then it says both in stable condition. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You get, I'll tell you, only a stable condition. You know, Jesus was born in a stable. Just want to make sure you're with me. And I have a joke from my minister's joke page. In school, they told me I'd never amount to anything because I was such a procrastinator. <sighs> I said, you just keep waiting and see. <laughs> oh, I know we all like to procrastinate once in a while. We all kind of go slow like molasses, but we, need, we can speed it up if we want to. And one more uh, joke from my minister's joke page. It's, this is a pondering question. How come teddy bears never want to eat anything? Why do you think teddy bears are never really hungry? They don't want to eat anything. I'll tell you why. Because they're always stuffed. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. Oh, Winnie the Pooh, sit down. Forget the honey. He's already full. So it's all good. Humor is good for the soul. We need to laugh. And when you laugh, it's not only the sign of the presence of God, but I'm going to be sharing with you also it's the sign of peace, which this morning we're going to be talking about peace. And the talk title I have is Holy Shalom, which is a word translated as peace. This morning we're going to go into the idea of peace and some avenues or ideas and way we can focus a deeper understanding to bring out more peace in our life, what we can do, practical steps that we can take. First, I'd like to say the word peace is translated in Hebrew as shalom. Interesting, it appears in the King James Version of the Bible over 429 times. Now, when they did a revision, this is another version of Scripture, this is the new, uh, the NIV, there is less uses of the word uh, shalom or peace in there, but it's still in the Bible, uh, both Jewish Scriptures and the New Testament, 230 times. 
So it's still a lot of times. I think one of the things or the challenges that we deal with when we translate words is some words don't always translate exactly letter for letter. Some of the ideas are concepts. So again, remember when we're translating any kind of ancient text, some words mean something in that culture, in that context at that time. And when we bring it into a modern version or a 2021 consciousness, it can mean different things, which I think gives the words that we're going to be studying, like shalom, some deep meaning. Like to define a, a, what the word shalom actually means. It's a Hebrew mean, it's a Hebrew word which means peace, harmony, wholeness, completeness prosperity, welfare, tranquility, and can also be used as a greeting to say hello or goodbye. Now, you can understand when the translators of the Bible had some challenges because that word can mean so many different things, but it's all rooted in that oneness of wholeness. And the piece we're going to be talking about, holy shalom, is about oneness. It's remembering the creator within us and how we can experience that in our everyday life. I would say that peace or shalom challenges us to discover within ourself, to discover our own self through the circumstances that we experience. When we stop going against peace or shalom and going with the flow of shalom, our life gets sweeter. And I believe it really does. And this is from uh, the epistle from Colossians. And this is chapter three, verse 15. And this is from Paul. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you are called to peace, to be thankful. Think about that idea, called to peace. We're all of that one body. See, again, one substance, one power. There's only one divine idea through which we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. We don't have to make it. We have to allow it to become part of us in consciousness. This morning, to achieve peace or have shalom, I think we need to really think about where are we going? Where are we moving in our life direction? Are we still trying to fix things? Are we trying to go someplace? Are we trying to be someplace? Because if we're always in a rush, 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 that really doesn't lead us to really a peaceful or shalom consciousness. I will say that we don't find peace. Peace is already within us. Please hear what I just said. We don't find peace. We don't really discover peace outside of ourselves. Peace or shalom is found within us. That's awakening to the wholeness, to the harmony, that we are one with the one. It's a very powerful divine idea that can transform all of our lives. Do we feel beautiful and safe? If you're living in shalom, you should. We surround ourselves with peace-minded people and we let the spirit of peace or shalom guide us. So that means every decision we make, we are guided. We are level-headed. We're in harmony, no matter what the situation is. And this is from that great uh, uh, Asian um, sage, really, Latus, and he says, if you are depressed, you are living in the past. If you are anxious, you are living in the future. If you are at peace, you are living in the present. Let's just breathe into that idea of peace. Think of what that sage is telling us. And I think it's true. How much of our time do we spend in the past or the future and robbing the now moment, the now shalom moment, the holy moment, the holy shalom moment that we're in right now? I'd encourage each of us and all of us to, re, to think that every breath that we take should be rooted in a higher realization of shalom, of peace. You know, breathing sounds so easy. We've been doing it ever since we've arrived on this planet here. But are we really monitoring our breath? You know, the word Holy Spirit means holy breath, too. Every breath that we take is holy. Every breath that we take can strengthen us into allow us to not only permeate our mind, our body, and our soul temple, which is our body, but to allow us to live in shalom, to put things back into order, to put things back into absolute harmony, so then we can go forward to live the life that we've come to live. I will share with you that most people 
are breathing just to survive. They're breathing just to feel in touch. But are they breathing to feel in touch with the presence of spirit within them? Something to think about, all of us. I'd encourage you as true students to be breathing in a purpose or a divine peace purpose. You breathe in holy shalom, you hold it, and then you release holy shalom. That's living in peace. And I believe if you study the teachings of Jesus, you would realize, or any great master, is that if you're not in peace, which the opposite would be anxiety, that's not where you want to live. That's how life starts to unravel and get more and more complicated. When we have a clear head and a clear mind, when we have clear shalom breath, we make the right decisions at the right time. And this is from Wayne Dyer. Peace can become a lens through which you see the world. Be it, live it, radiate it. Peace is an inside job. So this morning, I'd encourage you to think about that. Are you living peace? Are you being peace to your highest conscious understanding? And if not, what is causing you anxiety? What's causing you to be in stress? It's something to think about. Something that we can work on walking through in a higher understanding of peace. I'd like to share with you a concept that I recently came upon, and it's called editing. We think of editing as for newspapers or for writers, but I'd like to share with you this idea of editing our own lives, editing our own to-do list. How are we showing up? Maybe we need to edit what we're putting on that to-do list. Maybe we can edit out some activities that really don't serve us anymore. Maybe we need to edit out activities or actions or going places or doing things that really don't bring us pleasure. See, by editing out, it gives us more space to really feel peace in our life. It's a tool that we can use every day. And again, not just for writing an essay, but editing out every day what is yours to do for this day, like Sunday. And what you do on Sunday might not be what you do on Monday. So it's a divine idea that I, I have been using, and I find it very helpful in keeping me in alignment with holy shalom. We recognize our opinions don't always matter. Do you believe me? Do our opinions really matter on all subjects? I think we need to think about that. I mean, if, are we just parroting thoughts in a conversation, or are we giving insightful understanding? Are we being asked for our opinions? I have realized if no one asks for my opinion, then maybe I need to monitor what's going on and realize that I just don't spill it out just because I got to get it out because that does not cause peace in any relationship circumstance that we may be living in. I believe we have to practice peace or practice the silence. And when we live in this idea of holy shalom, holy wholeness, we have reverence. It also gives us reservation to show up as the Christ for our own life according to how we picture and lens the Christ. Someone could picture it differently over there, and somebody could picture it differently over there. We're not judging. We're observing through the lens of holy shalom. One of the things people don't want to hear, but I'm going to let you in on a little truth, is really not everything is about us. We're here to be a part of a unit. We're here to be a part of that one body which Paul was talking about, that one Christ idea, that one idea of wholeness. What are we going to do this Sunday to hold up our space? I didn't say hold up the whole world, but our space to show up with that divinity of holy shalom. And again, this is a letter from Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. The bond of peace. You're only going to understand the bond of peace if you're practicing peace. How does peace show up in your life? Let's back up. When I say the word peace and I ask you, how would you demonstrate that in your life? What would be your answer? Because it can mean different things to different people. But I think when we implement the idea of peace, holy shalom, and we make it a part of our daily practice. Again, every breath, holy shalom in, we are, and then we release that into the world. We're just not taking it for ourselves. We're releasing it and acknowledging it and giving it forth to the world around us. 
I will say the truth about practicing is it's all about creating new actions. And when we create new actions, we create new neural pathways within our own minds. We create new pathways in which we can show up. That's why habits. That is why spending time in the silence is so important. And again, I'm not bringing the idea of having a practice in the silence because I'm trying to scold you or anything like that. I'm just sharing with you what the ancients taught if you want to live in holy shalom. You have to create a practice that works for you. I'd like to share a story with you about this idea of peace or holy shalom. A rabbi had three uh, main students. As the rabbi was getting older, he decided to choose one of them as his successor. To test their shalom wisdom, he said, I'm going back to Jerusalem for a few months. Here are three bags filled with ancient shalom seeds inside them. Each of you will take a bag and keep them. You'll keep the shalom until I return. When I return, I will check on my seeds. The rabbi was uh, ancient. These seeds are very ancient. And actually, in tradition of the Talmud, that these seeds were actually the original seeds from actually the Garden of Eden. So these are very special seeds, shalom seeds. Again, the rabbi said, I will return and I will check on the seeds I've given you. The students took their bags and they all left. After the rabbi's departure, the first disciple thought carefully and kept those seeds in a safe dresser drawer so he could give them back to his rabbi when he returned. The second student thought, hmm, if the seeds are kept with him for, uh, for a couple months in the bag, they might get spoiled. They might not live. They might, they might not be able to be used again. So what he did is he sold the seeds in town and he decided within his own thinking that he would buy new shalom seeds when his rabbi returned. So this whole that thought, we'll come back to that story. This is from Albert Einstein, the great mathematician, as we know. And he says of something very keen that I'd like to share with you. Peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. This morning, I invite us to understand our life, to understand our situations, to understand where we are, because then we can pray with a, an understanding of our peacefulness can become, we can drench it through all our divine ideas, thoughts, and images. One of the things I want to share with you is when people are in a tough situation and the only question you keep hearing or coming up in your own mind is, why me? Why did this happen to me? I don't understand. I don't understand. Why is this happening to me? How could this happen to me? This should never have happened to me. I invite you to take a deep breath. Whatever's happening to you is happening for a reason. And I don't necessarily know always the reason why, but your soul does. Just because we study truth doesn't mean that our lives are going to be, quote, always easy. Just because we study truth doesn't mean we're never going to have any, quote, problems. Just because we study truth and we apply what we know day by day, and as we grow in our understanding, here we're talking about holy shalom, peace, it doesn't mean that all our relationships are going to be perfect. But I will say, if the mind within you keeps asking why, 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 I'm here to say, as the ancient teachers of metaphysics would share with their students, you're, in an, you're really in a victim consciousness. That's not a metaphysical consciousness. That's not a metaphysician consciousness. A metaphysician consciousness knows they're in a situation they don't like, but they apply the truth that they know. And that's what I'm encouraging us all to do this Sunday, to apply shalom to our lives. However we however we see fit in the situation. And then we can pray differently because Shalom does allow us to pray, to pray from wholeness, to pray from that oneness within us. We can feel God's peace and it saturates our aura. We give peaceful thanks to whatever is going on in our lives. Do you really do that? We should. It's only God's substance. We're all working out of the same substance. It's all the same atoms and molecules, right? To be peaceful is to embody the peace energies. And when we embody these divine ideas, we change the vibrational grid of our central nervous system. 
That's the power. That is the blessing of living in shalom. This is from Science of Mind, and this is uh, Ernest Holmes. Why should, uh, excuse me, we should carefully consider whether we are willing to experience the results of our thoughts. Wow. I don't think we are. I don't think we really are. Oh, I think we say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready, Reverend Mike. I, I know what I'm thinking. I'm living out of my consciousness. I understand life is consciousness. Are you really? Are you monitoring the thoughts that really go through your mind? And I'm not talking about just the thoughts and feelings and the images that you express out in front of people or, you know, when you're waving to people to say hello. I'm talking about every thought, every feeling and every image. Because it's something to work toward to a higher understanding of shalom. I believe peace plans. Being in a peaceful state allows us to plan our life to be and do what we need to do in that particular day again. So we make plans, we make goals, and we allow those to be our accomplishments. But we don't live in yesterday's accomplishments. We live in today's accomplishments. So again, what are we going to do this Sunday to live in holy shalom? You get to answer that question however you see fit. But I think it's a question we should ask. For every breath we take is taking in holy shalom. Are we using the God energy to the best of our ability? I will say that when we live in a state of awareness of holy shalom, we can coordinate step by step where we need to be, where we need to be, not somebody else, where we need to be in our own truth journey. And now back to this very interesting story about these shalom seeds. Months later, uh, the rabbi returned and called his three students together. Uh, the first one took out a bag of stored seeds. When he checked all the seeds, they had rotted. They were smelling. When the rabbi asked the second student for his seeds, he went to the market and bought and brought back uh, many more seeds and he gave them to the rabbi. Because remember, he sold them. He went to the market and he sold them. At last, the rabbi asked the third student, uh, where are the seeds I gave you? The rabbi said. The student took the rabbi to the temple courtyard and showed him a lush garden. See? The seeds you gave me are now numerous flowers, and through those flowers are more and more seeds. That's shalom. Those are shalom seeds. The rabbi was filled with the energy of shalom in his heart, and all the flowers really brought a very high energy of thankfulness within him, and he decided, looking at that lush garden that was created from those shalom seeds, that the uh, third student really understood the concept, the Hebrew concept of what Shalom is, and he would be the rabbi's successor. What would you have done? Somebody gives you some seeds. Just stuff them in a drawer? Or would you go sell them and then you give them new seeds when they come back? Or better yet, why don't you take the, those Shalom ideas, those seeds, and plant them in all your activities? Plant them in our life. That's really what we're called to do, to take the seeds, the ideas and the thoughts, metaphysically, to plant them within our own soul consciousness so they can bring not only blossoms for us, but we can share them with the world around us and ourselves. There's a lesson to that, and it's a shalom lesson. Shalom only survives by applying it, distributing it, and using it. Do you use the gifts and the talents that you have? Do you use your understanding of shalom and peace? Now, I understand you know the definition of peace, but do you use it? I'm going beyond definition. I'm going into living metaphysics. Is it a part of your life? Is everything that you knit together within your own life circumstances, are the threads of shalom truly the foundational thread? Because you're the Christ. And this is from a very famous unity minister, one of my favorites, Mary Cupferly. Within you is the peace you dream about, the contentment your heart seeks, the strength, power, and ability you think others possess in greater degree. To me, when I read that, kind of just gives me the shivers because that truly sums up really what ho holy shalom should mean for us. 
we have it just as much as the people behind us or to the before us or whenever whatever civilization you're looking at the question is are we willing to plant the seeds to use the seeds to activate holy shalom in our life even in tough situations because that's where holy shalom is needed that's where holy shalom is needed that's why we're here. We're here to grow and expand. You know, people will say, oh, I, again, I don't understand why, 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 why. That's the wrong question. That's a victim consciousness. And I'm here to say, if you're in a victim consciousness, and I'm not judging, I'm just observing, you're living in duality and uh, thinking outside effects are causative, but victims have no power. And I'm, I'm here to say, as the Christ that you are, you can never be truly a victim. You're not thinking correctly. You need to untangle your thinking and let the light of shalom truly lead the path. And we do this by applying peace, and we apply peace to everything we're dealing with by accepting peace. Again, I'm not talking about just the definition of peace. How does it show up in your life? It shows up as a smile. When you're having a tough situation, something breaks. You get a flat tire. Is there shalom in that? Yes, there is. Because... It, it happened. You have to affirm that there's air coming and that you're going to be back on the road. You didn't have an accident. Whatever it could be. Whatever it is, every situation is shalom if you're, if you're living from a shalom consciousness. And that means you have to accept life as it comes. That doesn't mean that you don't get to imbue it with shalom because that's exactly what we get to do. That's the adventure. But we don't make it bad. We don't name it contrary to what it, we think it could be. We use it and look for the blessing in it. We should give ourselves shalom and then we will be able to see new directions. We'll be able to see new maps. Maybe we need bigger maps. Maybe we need a bigger map than Google map. Maybe we need to be bigger than Google. You know, before it was, before ask Google, it was ask God. Maybe we need to ask the God of shalom, holy shalom. What is the direction we need to go in? That's that's the direction we want to keep step by step walking in. This is the perfect time to take stock in our traits, our circumstances. And as we live this idea of shalom, we readjust. We're always readjusting. We always are readjusting. Life is not static. We're awake. We're living. We're moving. We're breathing. We're breathing and living and not only in shalom breath, shalom energy. Everything is shalom. God is shalom. That's the God that Jesus knew. Do you know that God? Do you know the God self within you that is totally rooted in harmony and peace and holy shalom? I invite you to find that space within you. Reacquaint yourself with that, that holy breath, that holy understanding, and let it truly lead you in the mystical life journey that you're on right here and right now. And this is from a very famous metaphysician. You all remember her. This is Louise Hay, who didn't have a perfect life. Her, her life had a lot of challenges in it. She had cancer. She had a lot of challenges. And I think sometimes people, when we read truth books, we idolize these people that just because they had healing, they never had any other problems. Guess what? Knocking at the door. It's not true. Just because you were a true student doesn't mean we're not going to have problems. We're not going to have snags. But hopefully we learn ways to get through those snags, to get through that mud puddle with having less stress and anxiety in our life, taking holy shalom as our partner. Louise Hay says, no person, no place, and no thing has any power over us, for we are the only thinkers in our mind. When we create peace and harmony and balance in our minds, we will find it in our lives. That's a great, you know, you could put that on a refrigerator magnet. But you see, it's just on a refrigerator. What's it doing for you? Are you living it? Are you breathing it? Do you actually truly believe what she's saying? See, if you don't, it's not going to impact your life. It's not going to impact your consciousness. It's not going to impact your circumstances. When we are living in holy shalom, the activity of peace, we indulge in what we love because what we love brings us absolute peace. Love and peace go together. Are we running around all day, running and running and running and busy, 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 busy? Maybe we need to take a pause, take a shalom break, and then get back to being busy, busy, busy. And this is from our co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore. 
You are developing your soul. And this is the important thing. The more you exercise your powers, the stronger they grow. What Myrtle Fillmore is talking about is exercising the powers of the divinity within our own selves. And I am here to say, along with Myrtle, our co-founder, that if you found this divine essence within you, you know it's rooted in peace, it's rooted in holy shalom. So every time we say this word spirit, it's really holy shalom. When we have remembered this and we activate it and we live from this consciousness, we create space and time in our own lives of our choosing. When's the last time you created space and time in your life for holy shalom? When are you going to? After you transition? <laughs> why not do it now? Why, why, wait, to act, why wait to Christmas Eve? You know, why, why wait to do a New Year's resolution after, you know, after New Year's? If you're being called to do something, take a deep breath, take holy shalom in and allow it. Allow it to nurture and marinate within your soul so you know how to proceed. If we are pushing and we're pulling, we're always watching the clock, watching the clock. It causes stress. Shalom does not have stress. Doesn't mean that you don't know what's going on, but you're not anxious and anxious and anxious. And we live in a world that's way too anxious. And if you're in the vibration frequency of being anxious, then you truly are not in the vibration anywhere near of holy shalom. And this is from that great sage, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Nothing can bring you peace but yourself. Nothing can bring you peace but the triumph of principles. You can see why so many New Thought teachers loved Emerson. Because Emerson always went back to the principle. And the principle we're discussing this Sunday is the principle of shalom. If God is a God of peace, it truly is a God understanding and concept that passes all understanding. But that doesn't mean that we can't understand it. We can understand it and we can apply it to our lives. Because peace releases the shackles from us that are binding us. Binding us in lack and limitation and relationship challenges, health challenges, whatever the challenge is, whatever the snag is. Principle, the principle of shalom can be the antidote to releasing that from our lives and we can move forward. In closing, I'd like to say, just because you're awake doesn't mean you should stop dreaming about shalom. I invite you this week, every day, to take in the idea of what shalom means to you, to dream about shalom. What do you, what do you think it means to dream about shalom? You get to decide that, because remember, you're the Christ. I'd encourage you to be yourself. There's no one better than you. You are special. You are shalom, holy shalom substance. Again, I'd say stress less and enjoy the best living of shalom. Again, shalom is an energy that penetrates all of our divine powers. Let's use it. Let's use it with a grin on our face and make it a part, a component of every activity that we do. And lastly, I'd like to say, look for the magic of shalom in every moment that you live, starting right here and right now. Happy shalom moment. And I'll see you next week. And as we go into, again, the, the Advent understanding, may hope and faith and peace or shalom truly awaken us to where we're going. So when we celebrate the birth of Christ on Christmas Eve, we know that there's also a birthing process that's happening within us. And we can say shalom. And we just say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service. We have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes. I invite you to take whatever your gift is and put it in the palm of your hands and imbue it with holy breath, holy shalom. And you can go to unityway.com and get our physical address. You can go to unityway.com and do electronic uh, donation. And we just say thank you from Unity Way Church. And again, as good Unity students, we always tie 10% of whatever this church receives to where we're spiritually fed. And we can truly say, holy shalom. If you join me in our prayer, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. Thank you, the God of shalom. And so it is. Amen. 
and now our prayer of protection. We can only know true protection if we know holy shalom. As we speak this prayer, may we speak it for our own selves. May we speak it for our ancestors in the past and whoever our ancestors will be in the future. And may we saturate this planet in which we live and move and have our being with a higher understanding of shalom. Will you join me, please? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And we know it's well because we have found our holy breath. And I know you have found your holy breath. You have remembered who you are. May this Sunday truly be a day of holy shalom. And we'll see you next Sunday. Shalom.